that's a tough pill to swallow. I mean, I, even from an independent filmmaking standpoint, I've had agents and um, distributors say, we love the movie, we love the script, we love everything about it. It's not going to go anywhere because there's no name in it. Right. That's a real reality right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a little bit less of a reality then, but it's still a reality, which means they want to work with the, the person who presents the star, you know, the, the draw of the show, right? Mm -hmm. So even when you're making a TV show now, there's all of these outlets. There's tons of places that are looking for content, but they have their pick of the litter. If they, yeah. you know, to them, they want Reese Witherspoon. They don't want like an unknown star or whatever okay. to star in their show. And this is happens in the movies too, because how are they going to sell an independent movie in today's marketplace if they don't have a marquee name? Mm -hmm. And it's too bad because it, it really hurts what these things should be doing, which is television and indie movies should be promoting new talent to reach a new audience. Yeah, It should. Yeah. Yeah, but they the don't. lesson the lessons are not learned because TV keeps finding new talent, um, but they still keep wanting to only cast you know established stars to star in it. It's tough. I know exactly what you're saying because the independent movie and the and the trying to create a pilot for TV, which I've been you know which I still do, you really need. They really say, who's the star of the show? How do you get them? Let me ask you a quick question. Would you think, do you think that correlates into voice acting? Because I'm a voice actor as well. And what I've noticed when I was younger, it was anybody's voice. It was who, pretty much who had the best voice and they were selling the best commercials. Now I'm hearing uh, Ed O'Neill on, on these like the internet commercials. I'm hearing John Kaczynski on commercials. I'm like, don't you guys already have enough money? I mean, I love what you do, but don't take it all. Like, I mean, what are your thoughts? I know that's not in our questions, I but. Know, I you know, that voice, I've known a lot of voiceover actors, and that's been a complaint from, from the get-go. I know you know, and there is, there might have been more, I did some voiceover in Chicago, there might have been more of an openness to it, but for the for major products, uh, like, for instance, Jeremy Piven's dad was a very well-known voiceover actor, had a beautiful voice. He's always warming it up. Tia. Um, um, excuse me. Uh, so he's constantly warming up his voice and it's all about his voice. Mm -hmm. um, but he would say like, why are they, why is Ed O'Neill doing this thing when it should be me? Burn Pivot. <laughs> Everybody wants Burn Pivot's voice. <laughs> it's like, but you know, they, they want Ed O'Neill. Well, you know, they want they want the recognizable voice because unconsciously people hear that voice and say, like, hmm, there's a voice I, 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 I know for some reason. Maybe I should buy this product. I agree with you. Like, what's the, you know, why they can pay him $2 million. They pay you, you know, $25 and change. You do it. But, and you do have a great voice, by the way. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Khan. He yeah, does. Really good he doesn't need to. Keep doing. He's I, doing it. I think I will. Thank you because J JK said so. I'm going to do it. Thank you, sir. I, I do. I truly appreciate, it and I truly do. Thank you. I don't know if you could see the poster in the back that says King Humble. He, he has a bit of an ego issue. So I'm working he, on it. He does not need the compliments. I'm working on it, Jeff. I'm working no, on no, it. You, should, you need the ego, actually, because because otherwise you get you get blown to bits. Yes. The problem with ego is what do you do after? you make it, yeah, that, when, yeah, when, yeah, it when, sure. when you can't rein it in. What, why are you looking at me? I've never got there far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, uh, I, I, I get why, why movies and, and TV shows do that. I mean, and I think largely it's the fault of the general audience because what's the first thing that somebody says when you say, have you seen this movie? Who's, who's in, in it? it? Yeah. yeah. Who's in it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hope, I, I mean, well, I, I get where they're coming from, but I, I guess you can only hope as a struggling actor to get on one of those vehicles and then be able to bridge from a supporting to a lead eventually because yeah. people then know you. It's, you know what, you have to think of yourself like a stock, yeah. right? So you, you need a portfolio, right? You need, yeah. and, and once you've established the viability of your stock as something that makes money, that generates commerce, then, mm -hmm. and that's cynical, maybe cynical, but I'm just, I'm, I, I don't feel cynical saying it, but I just feel like that's the reality of, of a marketplace. 
because people yeah. are looking at Netflix going like, I don't know what to choose. There's eight bajillion things here. Oh, I know that person, right? Mm -hmm. That's um, uh, David Polinsky's uh, other name or whatever. <laughs> what is your name? I don't know any of your names except for David. <laughs> but what is your, all your names? Torian and Durden. Yes. Maybe you should just pick a name and stick with it, you know, or just be a, be a one name guy. One name guys are the best. I can't because David Petlansky still has to land regular jobs and they don't like <laughs> what Durden Godfrey does on the side. <laughs> they don't, they don't appreciate you having a passion beyond the nine to five that they're asking no, they you don't. to. It's so funny. It's, it, I, I, you know, I'm a teacher now and uh, a lot of my students, my pilot writing students, this is what they write about, you know, this exact, this, this thing. And it's always been a thing. It's like, how do you negotiate your aspirations and still try to survive in the, in the world? It doesn't get old mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, just how you execute that pilot to make it compelling. Yeah, at least now with YouTube, you can feel like you've made it before you've actually made it in a sense. That's true. And, and there is, that is the place where the unknown becomes the known, right? You do actually have a place. Now. Which, and now the A-listers that were take that, that drove people to YouTube are, are now on jumping YouTube. on YouTube They're and on YouTube. taking YouTube. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on that. That's a whole... Well, it's called greed, and that's what that's what motors capitalism. Yeah, I mean to 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 brush off a little of the cynicism of the conversation. It, we all are all aware it takes a lot of money to make a movie, so you know there's no yeah, that's, yeah. hire us. Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer. <laughs>